just embrace it. A roller coaster ride of hormones can be kind of fun. You just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. But in reality, how does intermittent fasting really affect your hormones as a male? Let's break it down. There's some good, some bad, but all of it can be corrected. Here we go. So let me start with the big, hairy, scary monster first. Fasting drops your testosterone. Dramatic pause. Acutely, okay? It does not drop it chronically. During a fast, of course, your testosterone levels will drop. It doesn't make any kind of like biological or even evolutionary sense. Like, why would we want to reproduce when we're starving? Okay, but here's the interesting thing. Okay, if you lose fat with fasting, your testosterone levels will be back up in the long term. And that's what we have to look at. Who cares about a short term drop? We're talking about what's happening in the aggregate, in the big picture. You see, fat houses an enzyme called aromatase. And aromatase, which is stored up in our fat, it takes testosterone that is in the bloodstream and converts it into estrogen. So that means if you take an overweight male that is producing a good amount of testosterone already, he's producing testosterone well, well, his fat, unfortunately, houses an enzyme that is converting that testosterone into estrogen. So even though you're producing a good amount of testosterone, your actual testosterone levels are pretty low because it's getting converted and hijacked. The European Journal of Endocrinology highlighted this like beautifully. They highlighted in a very clear study that when fat was reduced, well, testosterone levels went up without any other intervention or any other changes. Pretty, pretty simple. But what we have to remember is that testosterone isn't just about muscle and things like that. That's like one component. Okay, the main role of testosterone is creating sperm, an active sperm. We have 25 to 125 times as much testosterone in our testes than we do at any other point in time in our plasma. Okay, so I don't want you to just be thinking that this short drop in testosterone is affecting your muscle mass. It's really not. What we do have to look at is this vicious cycle that men get into. And then I promise I'm gonna to get to the intermittent fasting stuff directly, but this is important. This is a very vicious cycle and it captures a lot of guys. One function of the many functions of testosterone is to suppress what is called estrogen receptor beta. It's literally a receptor for estrogen. And when testosterone is doing its job properly, it suppresses that receptor so that estrogen can't really bind and can't really survive, if you want to call it that. Okay, well, when testosterone levels are lower, because so much has been converted into estrogen, et cetera, et cetera, well, what happens is we end up with way too much in the way of overactive estrogen receptors. So we end up with so much estrogen reception that we don't end up utilizing testosterone as well. But there's a secondary issue that comes along with that. Okay, the more estrogen receptors that we have, the more that it affects our glucose homeostasis. Okay, more estrogen receptors, more estrogen receptor beta means less GLUT4. Now, GLUT4 is a shuttle bus that takes glucose out of your bloodstream and into the muscle cell. Okay, without GLUT4, your muscle cells aren't getting the glucose they need and your blood sugar is remaining high. If your blood sugar remains high, you can become insulin resistant. If you become insulin resistant, it is a lot easier to gain fat because that means the muscle is not taking up the glucose, but the fat is taking up that insulin and glucose. Okay, so you see the vicious cycle. You already have some fat on you, okay? The estrogen is piling on and the estrogen receptor is expanding, okay? Then that means you have more insulin resistance, okay? Then that means more fat accumulation, more estrogen, and boom, 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 and it just snowballs into this giant snowball of I can't escape my high levels of estrogen and I don't know what to do. That is actually where intermittent fasting, despite the acute drop in testosterone, can impact you positively because it improves insulin sensitivity. So it helps it so that, wait a minute, now you actually have a fighting chance to allow testosterone to do its job properly. So having these intermittent breaks of eating, fasting, allows this insulin resistance to not be as big of a threat. Okay, but let's break it down a little bit more with some other stuff that really, 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 really is important. Okay, factoring in erectile dysfunction and insulin resistance as well. Okay, maybe you've noticed that, well, as you've gained some weight, you're not working as well as you used to. Well, there's a study that's published in the journal Fertility and Sterility that found that, oh, well, wait a minute, insulin resistance is directly correlated with erectile dysfunction. It has to do with the fact that it cannot allow nitric oxide to be synthesized properly. Nitric oxide allows the vessels to uh, dilate, okay, which allows blood flow to you know what, okay? So there, if we are not having those endothelial cells really producing the right nitric oxide, then the vessels aren't dilating, okay? And that all has to do with insulin resistance. Again, inter-intermittent fasting. So again, 
Although people on the internet will tell you intermittent fasting is terrible because it's acutely messing up your leptin, your cortisol, and your testosterone, we have to take a big, big picture look at this. Okay, if you're not fasting all the time and you're just doing it acutely, occasionally, the benefit of dropping your insulin resistance and improving your insulin sensitivity far supersedes any potential short-term negative impact on your hormones. Let's continue. When I'm fasting, I'm not exactly thinking about intercourse, okay? And it's kind of funny because I talk to a lot of guys that feel the same way, okay? It's pretty normal. In fact, some studies have looked at people during the month of Ramadan and they say, okay, well, when they're fasting during Ramadan, yeah, it looks like sexual intercourse goes down significantly. Okay, well, there could be some other factors at play there, but when you look at other studies, you see, yeah, okay, libido goes down. But there's some interesting studies that find that during fasting periods, whether it's a longer fast or just periods of intermittent fasting, follicle stimulating hormone drops. Follicle stimulating hormone could absolutely be driving your libido. That is a big part of it. So let's take a look at how this works. Follicle stimulating hormone is secreted by your pituitary gland. And one of the things that follicle stimulating hormone does is it creates more androgen binding protein. Androgen binding protein, just like the name implies, binds to testosterone and allows the testosterone to get into the tubules of the testes to actually do their job, okay? Without androgen binding protein, testosterone isn't going where it needs to go. Okay, so with lower levels of FSH, you have lower levels of ABP, and that means less testosterone getting where it needs to go. So you're not getting that high concentration of testosterone that is going in there to allow sperm to mature and all that whole like reproductive thing. Well, here's something really interesting. If you look at the chart that is on the screen right now from a study that was way back in 1981, okay, they took a look at subjects, men, doing a 10-day fast, and they said, wait a minute, yeah, their testosterone levels definitely are dropping. Ooh, not good. But then wait a minute, you see that on the chart right in front of you. After they refeed, a week after they refeed from their fast, their testosterone levels are higher than they were when they started their fast. Hmm, all right. So net net, we're ending up with higher testosterone. Well, what's going on? Well, think about it like this. Okay, biologically, again, I hate to even use the word evolutionary, but let's look at it like this, right? If you were fasting, your libido is gonna drop because why would you reproduce while you're fasting? Okay, but if you break your fast and you refeed, your body might overreact a little bit and say, whoa, we don't know when this guy is gonna like starve again, so let's make a baby and let's make a baby right now. So it shoots the testosterone through the roof. So these intermittent spikes of fasting, these intermittent drops and spikes of fasting and feasting could be exactly what you need to sort of like kickstart, just like kicking a motorcycle, you know, getting it started exactly what you need to get that testosterone level a little bit higher to break through that vicious cycle again. Now, what you eat during your refeeding window is also very important too. I did put a link down below for Thrive Market, which is what I use for a lot of like my pantry staples and my groceries and things like that when it comes to fasting. I have my specific fasting bundles as well as keto bundles and paleo bundles and all that. Anyway, they're online membership-based grocery store. They are a sponsor of this channel, but it makes sense to mention them right now because it's very relevant. So use that link down below after this video and you can get a free gift when you utilize them. So they end up being a lot cheaper in the grocery store in many cases and it gets delivered to your doorstep. So ultra convenient for busy guys, which honestly I know as a busy dad, busy business person, I get it. Like I don't even have time to go to the store. I used to love going to the store. Now I despise it because it gets delivered to my doorstep and I'm getting kind of spoiled. So anyhow, use that link down below for Thrive Market to check out your fasting essentials. Okay, moving on, we look at leptin, which most people think is just the cheat meal hormone, okay? But it's not quite that simple. Leptin is a signaling device that is secreted by our fat that tells our hypothalamus, hey, metabolism is high or metabolism is low. High amounts of leptin generally mean, okay, high amounts of fat, feel free to speed up the metabolism. There's no shock that fasting decreases leptin because of course it's gonna tell the brain that, well, this is a survival situation, so whatever you do, don't speed up the metabolism. But leptin is not just about metabolism. In fact, one could argue that leptin is more associated with like reproductive systems than anything else. The Journal of Clinical Investigation published an interesting study that demonstrated that leptin is largely responsible for what's called the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. Okay, that is where the hypothalamus sends a signal to the pituitary, and the pituitary sends a signal to our gonads to ultimately produce, you guessed it, testosterone and to some degree estrogen. So if leptin levels are messed up, we're messing up that signal. Hmm, well, where am I going with this? If leptin regulates, ultimately, the pituitary gland and how much luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone it releases, then could leptin be responsible for the drop in testosterone during a fast? Well, 
the study investigated a little bit further. 72 hour fast, okay, they took a look at mice and they found testosterone levels were dropping. No surprise, we know that happens. But they gave them an injection of leptin and upon giving them the injection of leptin with L anything else, no food, no change, just leptin, their testosterone levels were restored and went up. Whoa, so is leptin what is responsible for the drop and the change in our follicle stimulating hormone, our luteinizing hormone, ultimately our testosterone during a fast? Hmm, it seems like it probably is. The cool thing is, is that upon breaking a fast, you have a surge in leptin. And that could actually help you out and explain why testosterone levels come up after a fast. But we have to expand a little bit more. Balance is important. Okay, there is a study published in the Asian Journal of Andrology that found that high levels of leptin also negatively affected these sexual hormones. So, shoot, what do we do? What's going on there? Well, most of us don't have an issue with too little leptin, believe it or not. Most of us have an issue with producing too much and the cells become resistant to it, and when they become resistant, they just don't receive leptin. So as far as the brain is concerned, we don't have much leptin. But in reality, our plasma levels of leptin are very high. The brain just has turned off the receiving signal. So it's like the loading dock is closed, and now you just have trucks piling up. Those high levels of leptin probably are, quite frankly, irrelevant. Because all that matters is what the hypothalamus is receiving. So for all intents and purposes, as far as the hypothalamus is concerned, leptin levels are still low. So low leptin does equal low testosterone, but, or at least it's correlated as such. We can't really conclude that high levels of leptin, extremely high levels of leptin are correlated with low testosterone because it could just be, again, the reality of the hypothalamus. Intermittent fasting plays a role here because once again, it improves leptin resistance because you give yourself a break from producing leptin. While you're fasting, you're not producing leptin, and therefore your hypothalamus gets a chance to reset and becomes more likely to accept that leptin signal and restores that balance that can affect that hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis that allows you to have that libido, have that sperm production, have that testosterone production, and ultimately have those lower levels of estrogen and that better glute for transportation that's allowing your muscles to get the glucose and stop you from being as fat. So no, it doesn't mess up your hormones. It kind of balances them if you do it right. The trick is intermittently fasting, acute, Stressor, not a chronic stressor. Do it two or three days a week and let it be an anomaly, as I always say. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.